Life with Christ, if I can sum it up in a few words, it would be pain, misunderstanding, confusion, yeah. and um, just a lot of emptiness. So a little bit about my past. When I was 14, that's when I started drinking. Then it led up into college and a few years after. And then after drinking, it was never enough. So I decided to go into marijuana. Then from marijuana to have taking pills. And from taking pills was to having sex outside of marriage. Literally not having Christ in my life was just, just reckless and just a whole bunch of pain. Growing up, I didn't really like know Jesus. I didn't really go to church super often. It was one of those things where I was around church. We went to a VBS every now and then, or like a Sunday night church where we built some sweet race cars. Like, it was just one of those things where I wasn't like in the church, but I had this sort of just basic idea of who this Jesus guy was. I'd never met my biological father, and. Uh, growing up, that was always hard for me. I definitely felt very unloved in those moments. I felt, uh, man, just like, why like why didn't he want me? Um, and uh, man, it created a lot of anger. It created a lot of anger, a lot of hatred towards that man. And it wasn't a fun feeling, but I mean, that's just, that's, that's what I was dealing with. Really honestly, the beginning of my struggle, I would really have to go back to the very start. Um, and I was burdened with rejection. Um, and so at the age of three or four, where my feelings and emotions should have been um, healthy and figured out in a, a healthy manner, um, it was just burdened with rejection. And I found myself just going through life, living through that rejection and making choices based on, are they gonna reject me? Are they gonna hurt me? Um, so I just would make every decision based on that. Before, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of turmoil throughout the years, you know, just, um, there, was, uh, there was some alcohol involved, a lot of alcohol. Not being able to deal with, uh, with home, you know, um, not getting involved, so after a while, that became more of my, um, my, uh, my way of life. You know. Work was my, my refuge. And uh, we were at a conference in Tennessee, and one of the days that we were there, they start talking about just this thought of forgiveness and like growing up with these feelings of like my biological father doesn't love me and he doesn't want anything to do with me. That was super duper hard. Um, but it was in that moment that I felt like God was telling me like, man, just because you don't have this this relationship with your earthly father, like there is a heavenly father in heaven who is there. He loves you. He wants you. He chooses you. Um, man, it just, during that summer, it felt like Romans 8 just kept screaming at me. Just, there will never be anything that will be able to separate you from the love of Christ. So I'm home and I get a call from my mother and she says, God talked to me last night, right? And he told me to call you every day. Now, she doesn't know what I'm going through. Right? She doesn't know that I have hit rock bottom, you know, wheels have fallen off, I'm, I'm, I'm a mess. She doesn't know that. But she was told the night before to call me. So I said, okay. So she's calling me to move forward with this. So then finally she asks me, do you read the Bible? You need to read the Bible. So me, you know, purposely, a jab at mom, well, you never taught me how to read the Bible, did you? You know, that was, that, that was my intent. Now, she says, okay. So this is what you do. You open up your Bible every day and wherever you land, all right, that's what you read. You know, I blew it off for, for, for about two weeks. 
But then yeah, I got curious, you know, so I start opening the Bible, you know, and then slowly, you know, I start, you know, just, wow, you know, and uh, then I'm noticing I'm not, well, I, I don't have to say this, I'm not lying. Then so, suddenly, you know, slowly I start to realize that things that were like deep there in my mind, I, I'm finding an answer. I mean, there's, there it is. I'm like, wow. And then I start telling my wife the same thing. Lydia, wow. Then I start realizing that this book is talking to me. You know, so <laughs> here it comes. Slowly. Wow. Then I couldn't wait. I mean, it's like I wake up in the morning, I step night, you know, and it's like, and I would just, you know, Lydia, this, and I would tell anybody who wanted to hear, this book talks to me. This book talks to me. You know, if I think it, if it's bothering me, if I have it in the back of my mind, I'll pick up that book and I'll just read, and then suddenly it's like, whoa, amazing. God is the only way. Jesus is the only way. I have learned contentment in the chaos. I've learned that it does not matter if man rejects me, if God is on my side. It, uh, it, there's honestly just so much peace in that, in that in living in rejection and choosing to live from that place really just, I was rejecting God the whole time. So the very thing I didn't want to happen to me is what I was doing to God. But He loved me enough to still just be there and still accept me and love me. And as at the right moment, He spoke directly to me and it just changed everything. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that, um, you know, I've heard my whole life that we're made in the image of God. Um, and I always believed that but I didn't walk in that. And I've discovered that whenever I don't know where I am or who I am, if I seek who He is, who I am will make complete sense. And that it, it's not determined by the value that man puts on me. It's not determined by if this person loves me or if they don't love me. It is truly determined on, I am the image bearer of God Himself. And if I am seeking Him, I won't worry about seeking me. A little bit after college, um, a few years after college, that's when I started to feel like, okay, I can't keep constantly filling this void with all these things that are hurting me. And I never wanted to be hurt. And I was trying to find love everywhere else, and I didn't know what love was until I met Christ. And when I got saved, I don't exactly remember when, but when I did, it seemed like everything just changed. Stuff was peeling off, like the addicted to uh, drinking, it started to just go away slowly but surely. And then after I just dropped it completely, it was like I felt like he wanted, he was pulling after me, but I was kept pulling back and going the other way and doing what I wanted to do. And so I said, I came to a point in my life where I said, I have to make a choice. The choice that I made back then was I do what I want to do. But the choice that I made um, prior to or going up into get wanted to get to know Christ, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be changed. I want my heart to be unhardened. And then once that happened, I don't know exactly when or what time, but all I know is that I felt so much lifted off of me. It felt like just everything was opening up. Things that were unclear began to be clear. When I felt like that I wasn't loved, he showed me love. He showed me what was real. And he was saying to me personally that if you continue down, he showed me visions of things that would happen to me if I continue down the path that I was going. And so once I said I'm done, and I threw my hands up and said I'm ready, I'm now I'm ready to fully commit, that's when everything changed.